Welcome to the Next Level American Dream podcast, brought to you by Thompson Multifamily Group. Your hosts, Abigail and Sean, will discuss how you can take your American dream to the next level through real estate investing, business practices, and personal development. Join us as we share our experiences as a father-daughter duo who are trying to accomplish their goal of financial freedom. We hope you learn more about how to define and achieve your American dream. Here's another episode of Next Level American Dream. On today's episode of Next Level American Dream, we welcome Gary Harper for his second appearance. Today, Gary and Sean talk about fear, its impact on performance, and how you can use it to drive yourself into greater success. Gary has amazing insight on this topic, and we're so thrilled to get to share it with you. He also has incredible experience helping businesses develop and scale. If you're interested in his company, check out the description below for more information about Sharper Business Solutions. If you're interested in learning more about multifamily investing, visit our sponsor's website at thompsonmultifamilygroup.com. Hi, Gary. Welcome back to the Next Level American Dream podcast. I appreciate you coming back. How are you doing? Good, good. John, I appreciate you having me on, man. I, I would love to be on this as often as you guys would have me, for sure. Well, you know, we don't we, we don't get a lot of time to talk, so this I'm going to schedule as many of these with you as I can just so we can hang out and talk a little bit, you know. Very That's, cool. this, this seems to be the only time that both of us have a free time to get to get together anyway. Yeah. Well, well, today I want to talk, uh, Gary, we still haven't talked about your, your core business, which is processes and systems. You know, we've had, we had you on before to talk about your family because you, you have a lot of family in your business. And I want to talk to you today about fear and how fear can be, you know, something that holds you back and something that can propel you forward too, depending on how you use it. Yeah. So if we can, let's, let's talk about fear and then we'll, we'll have you on again and we'll talk about processes and systems. I, I promise we'll get to your, your core business at some point, but. Well, honestly, the fear is a part of that from a core perspective, because I always tell people we see businesses that fail to scale, fail to grow because of of four major reasons. One of them is fear. And fear is probably the number one reason we see. So that this is very much in line with what we we discuss when we're helping clients. I always tell people we can't help you with your systems and processes until we help you with the other three things, which is fear, mindset and connections. A lot of times people fail in those areas and system and processes don't make the difference. Yeah. And that's kind of what, that's kind of what happened to me was, you know, f- the fear for me was something that I didn't even recognize that I had. And I was trying to implement the processes and systems in my business. And the, really the broken piece of my puzzle was me and uh, realizing that I had these fears and worries. It was, it was changing the way I was conducting my life. It was changing the way I was conducting my business. And I wasn't really focused on what was core important to me. And so the fear was actually holding me back. And that's, that's what I had to identify. But um, I was going to just talk a little bit. So my, the, the way I came to this was that you uh, asked me to come to one of your training uh, sessions, the CEO training, CEO and COO training. And Keith Cowling did a talk there about fear and worry. And in my life, you know, I'm, I'm older guy and I'm not, you know, I'm not a young guy. So I, I've kind of established my personality and stuff. And, and in my life, I didn't recognize that I had fears and worries. You know, I just get up every day and go do my work and, and everything was fine. And then you, we did that, the key did that talk at the thing. And I, I kept thinking, well, I'm, I'm, I kind of, I'm experiencing some of these things. And, and I'd been wondering what was going wrong in my business and um, trying to figure out what it is. And the exercise that you did was you had everybody write down their fears And I actually, as I was writing my fears down, I had to stop because it got too intense, you know, and and these things just sort of came flooding out of me that I didn't know that I was even carrying around. And so these fears and worries were so powerful that I just couldn't even, I couldn't even write them down. That's how strong the the, the emotions were with them. Yeah. And the fact that I had these just, just as I'm wandering around every day and just carrying this weight and didn't even realize it was um, sort of an epiphany moment in my life saying, Hey, I need to deal with this because this is a lot of weight that I'm carrying around. It's slowing me down. It's keeping me from progressing. It's keeping me from, from achieving my dreams. It's keeping me from all these things and my relationships are burdened by this stuff, everything. And so the fact that you had me come to that thing and, and we talked about that specific topic, it was sort of, I don't know, it was just kind of the perfect timing for everything for me. And so since dealing with those fears, it's, it's changed every, the way I do everything. But anyway, so that's, that's the story. And that's why it's important to me about talking about fears. And I think there's a lot of people out there that can benefit from a a discussion of fears. And I know you're excellent at at sort of synthesizing this information 
and can and can give people some uh, helpful things to talk about or do to, that can change their life and the way they do their business. So let's start with kind of what what is the fear or how would you define it? Well, I mean, fear is a, is a form of a mindset. I mean, fear is usually, you know, anxiety or worry about the unknown. That's where fear comes from. I think the world has probably experienced that a lot more in the last 12 months than we have in the last hundred years. Right. Really. And I think to some of us, it's uh, you know, it's something that we live with every day where others of us, it seems to sporadically show up. And I think there are obviously different ways to approach fear. You know, my whole thing is like when I'm, when I'm dealing with fear personally, and I, I think, for, I think I'll probably talk to this more from a personal level today than more from a coaching level. So Fear's always been something in my life that's that I've struggled with, and and then to that, you know, whether it was when the kids were born, and you you know you're growing a young family or something like that, the fear of like them getting sick or getting hurt, and or you know is you know God forbid you know even kidnapped, right? Like I mean that those were fears that would would resonate in my mind as a young man, and and I had a, and I think fear really showed up for me the first time with a good friend of mine I had kids of the same age of ours. And I went to college with him and he got a brain tumor and he passed away at like 23 years old. And then not about a year after that, I had another friend with young kids and he got, he got cancer and he died at like 26 years old. And, and I had like three friends in my twenties that all died from cancer with young kids, leaving his wife and widowed and the kids growing up, you know, you know, without dad. And I, you know, so battling that fear. And then, you know, then later, you know, I started make, having success in career and, and work. And I think corporate America does a really good job of implementing fear to keep you like locked in and not leaving and things like that. You know, well, you don't want to lose this cushy job. And what about those health benefits and, you know, and all that. And, and, you know, always wanting to be an entrepreneur and knowing that that was really what I needed to do. I couldn't make that jump because I was the fear. Right. And so fear holds you back. You know, it stops you from, 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 from enjoying the current state, right? Like the here and now. And it's, it's always, I always, I always feel like fear is one of the things that robs us of our peace of mind in the moment. And usually we're borrowing from tomorrow's problems when we create today's fear, you know, and uh, that's probably for me, like the, the biggest definition of fear is, you know, what's holding you back. What's because fear manifests itself in two ways. And you alluded to this a little bit ago, it either causes you to do something or not do something. Right. And so first I think you got to evaluate what does it cause you to either do or not do? Where some of us, like for me, it would hold me back, right? It would stop me from moving forward or move forward very cautiously, if you will. You know, I'd still progress, but I would progress at a slower pace than others because, you know, I was scared of like the outcome or what, you know, what Zig Ziglar used to call it the what if thinking, right? So it's like, what if this happened or what if that happened? You know, and that what if thinking can be paralyzing at times, you know, and I don't know. That's it. So I think when we talk about it, Sean, you talked about that session and, and or, you know, I'm talking about in general now, we're ta- we're leaning more towards a holding us back kind of a mindset, right? Where yeah, fear on the other side causes people to, you know, power through walls, do things. And, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. I definitely still feel that even when you have the fear and it causes you, it propels you forward. I think sometimes that causes us to make decisions ha- harshly or even a, in a rush manner when we, we when we allow fear to be the driver of it. And sometimes it's not the best decision either. So, you know, I think it can harm us in both ways. But you know, identifying first and foremost the root cause of it is probably one of the most important things you can do. Yeah, I think fear. That's exactly it. The fear, fear can sort of control your level of performance, right? So you, it can, it can prevent you from, from doing things that really it shouldn't. And it can cause you to do things that it shouldn't as well. Right. So fear can control your performance and it can, it can guide you into places uh, in your decision-making and the way you make life decisions in the wrong direction, either by holding you back or causing you to do something, propelling you forward in the wrong direction as well too. So fear it's all driven by, you know, just your body and your mind wanting to kind of keep you safe, right? Keep you sort of contained in their comfort bubble. And your mind doesn't want you to, to vary outside of what, what it knows for you to be comfortable and, and safe, right? 
And that's not how you make, that's not how you make big things happen in your life. You can't, you can't do things that are, you know, epic or, or, or going to be life changing without, without fear, right? It's just going to be a component that has to be there. And if it's, if the fear, if you're allowing the fear to keep you from doing those things or doing the wrong thing, it, it, it's a massively negative impact on your life, but you can use, you can't, like I said, you can use those fears to propel you in the right direction as well. If you're, if you're harnessing them properly. Yeah. So I think the biggest problem with fear is that it affects, it affects us in, in just the level of performance that we can do. And like you said, it keeps you, you may still move forward, but it may be very slow, you know, and measured, you know, you're kind of worried about something. So you're not, you're not, you're not going as fast as you could be when there's really nothing to worry about. Yeah. Um, you know, I know we have, we have different views on, on this a little bit, you know, um, biblically, I always tell people that the Bible says, do not fear 365 times. And it's interesting for me that it actually, you know, I've had that counted before that it says it 365 times. Cause it's like, it's one time for every day of the year. Right. Right. Like, cause we're going to have fear every single day, every day. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I've actually studied that and I've studied the, the translation of that in fact, the Greek and Hebrew and stuff. And, and it's funny because it's when it's talking about that, it's it talk when it talks about fear, it talks about it being a, a form of respect. And so think about that for a second. Like if we put yeah. a different twist on it, like I think fear is, is when it reaches a level of fear, it's crippling. I think there's deeper levels of fear. I think there's anxiety and panic and depression. I think all those stem, and I'm not a doctor, but I think those stem from fear. But uh, I think there's a healthy level of respect that you can still have for something. And then not let it translate into fear, right? And and so when it says when it says do not fear, I think what it means is to respect. Like I don't think you should fear firearms. I don't think you should fear certain things in life. COVID, for example, I don't think we should fear it. I think we should respect, have a lot of respect for things that could hurt us, right? That could that could damage our well being and, and damage our, not only our physical health, our mental health, you know, all those things. I think it's I think it's a level of respect that we need to have. And creating a balance around what to respect versus what to fear, you know. And and I think if you that's where that's where I think you start to take control of it if you can, you know, is is to give it the respect it's due without giving into the fear of what it could be. Yeah, and that's what I was going to talk about next is how to reframe those fears so that they can be used to sort of help you through life, right? You can use your fears to navigate life in a more positive way. You know, I think the problem that we have is when we let the fear sort of take over mm -hmm. and, and overwhelm us, right? So the, the fears that we have, there's a, a quote, a Seneca quote, it's uh, we, we, we suffer more in imagination uh, than we do in reality, right? So that's, I butchered that quote, but it's, that's kind of it, you know? Yeah. And we, we, we fabricate, not, not necessarily fabricate. Some of the fears are, are founded in, in, you know, and something real, but we sort of fabricate these stories in our minds a lot of times that are, that are much more bigger problems than, than the real, the reality of it. Right. Yep. And I think we worry ourselves into these, these fears that, that we don't need to have this, this large of an impact on our life. And I think if we can, if we can reframe how we look at our fears, then we can, you know, deal with them or take care of them or learn to, you know, learn to overcome them. And it, it's a matter of looking at them. And what the, I think most people, and this is what my issue was, is that I didn't even identify that I had fears, right? I didn't know that they existed in my life. I just was kind of cruising along and I just, you know, I, I knew I was afraid of snakes and flying. Didn't, I don't, don't like flying. You know, there's certain things I, I know that I'm afraid of or, or, or don't are uncomfortable with, but you know, like losing a loved one or getting sick with cancer and, and you know, you know, leaving your family, those fears are there with you all the time. You carry those things around, whether you realize it or not. And I think if you can, number one, acknowledge that they exist, identify what they are, and then get them out somehow, you know, write them down, talk to somebody about them, and then come up with a plan to sort of either technically deal with them or emotionally deal with them, you know, on a one by one basis, you can start to get through those fears and, and get beyond it. Yeah. So talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, you talked about, I think you were starting to get there with how to sort of reframe those fears 
so that they're not controlling you. You, you, you said you, you convert them from fears to something up that you respect. So you, you've identified it and you say, okay, this is not something I have to fear, but I need to be aware of it. I need to like COVID, you need to take certain measures to be aware of it, respect it, treat it, you know, with, you know, wear your mask or whatever you're going to do to, to, to give it its respect. And, and so how do you, how do you kind of know when you have a fear and then and move it through that system for you? Well, first of all, I, I, I have to eliminate the things in my life that might be aiding me in having fears, right? So that's the first thing for me. I, I need to make sure for me, I, I, I use, I make sure religion is a part of it for me. I, I make sure I get a good night's sleep, right? Like I think yeah. I, I'm, I'm the worst the next morning or the next day. Anxiety, fear, those things tend to, tend to have more power when I don't sleep well, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Good music helps aid me in giving me the right mindset to overcome and have the right fear. I use that humor. I, you know, humor is big for me. I have, I have a verse that I keep and it says, a merry heart doeth good like a merit medicine, but a broken spirit drives the bone, right? And, and I love that statement because it's like, you know, humor can, can, off, can be the opposite of fear. You know, it could be the opposite of anxiety and worry. Uh, but these are the things. And then for the things that, if I do those things, I still find it showing up on my life you know, I want to then identify where they are, what they are, right? Like so a lot of times we can have fear and anxiety and, and thoughts of, of, of that what if thinking, if you will, if, if we don't, we can have those and then not know where they're coming from, almost similar to what you experienced, right? right. Like they're there, but you just, they're underlying, you kind of push them to the back of the brain and just keep pushing forward. So I, we do an exercise and a lot of things I do is around the, the number three, like the three, I have a philosophy called three to thrive, right? And whether it's read three books a week, whether it's pick three goals a quarter, whatever, like a lot of things I do is in the, in the mindset of three. But uh, that mindset has led me to an exercise that I, I've created and, and that I do. And, and it's, it's a little bit of a twist from other exercises that I've seen in the past, but this is what's worked for me. And, and you got to find what works for you. But the first thing that I want to do is I want to identify, I think I take 10 minutes and I write down everything negative or fear-based that I have going on in my mind. And I just, it, it's not like I sit there and dwell on it. I just grab a piece of paper and I just start writing down. Like whatever the, the mind brings to my, my, my forefront of my head, whatever would come to the tip, lip of my, or the tip of my tongue, like instead of saying it, I just write it down, right? It's just like a data dump every, yeah. how, how, how often do you do that? I do it every Friday. Every yeah. Friday? Yeah. So I call, it, I call it a mind dump, right? It's, you, it's funny you right. said that data dump. I actually, actually refer to it as a mind dump. And I just dumped it all out, like good, bad. I mean, and it's just random. I mean, it has no, like, you know, logic to it. It just flows out. Like, and it could be everything from, you know, broken arm to like, you know, like, you know, one, the, I was, I always use this analogy, but one that really ever ju really jumped out at me one time was I was writing, it was like 12 year old shot. I'm like, wow, like, why did I just write that? And I got, I found myself thinking about where did that come from? And it was the news. I mean, like it had something I had heard on the news as we're close to Chicago, 12 year old, and it just stored in the back of my head. Like it was weird how it placed itself in my brain and just kind of took up residency, if you will, and just kind of sat there, right? Oh man. I, and it's just, it, you know, just, just a random thought that came to my, my mind as I'm writing. And, uh, and I just continue to do that. I do have about 10 minutes. The next thing I do from there is I, the next step is I actually start writing down everything I'm grateful for. Right. Yeah. Um, going back to that mindset of Mary Hart do with good, like a medicine, but a broken spirit drive the bone. I don't, I want to remove anything negative. Like I want to, it's almost like removing the venom out of the brain. Right. And then I want to replace it with everything that's positive of nature. You know, what am I, what do I have? What am I blessed with? What are, You'll see posts from me on Facebook and stuff like that. Usually, especially on like a Friday night, most of the time, you'll see I'm sitting here tonight, you know, thinking about how blessed I feel or this. And what did it, what I'm doing, that, that second part of that wave of that 10 minutes is, has, you know, just completed. And I just, you know, I want to be thankful for what I have. Right? Yeah. I want to stay humble. I want to be confident, but I want to stay humble. And so it's something I try to do regularly is, is to remind myself of the blessings that I have. And so first is we're taking all that negative stuff out, replacing it second, next 10 minutes with all that positive things, anything I'm happy about, grateful for, things like that. And then the last one for me, and typically between step and step, step two and step three, I get pretty tired. I don't know about you, if you've ever done, you know, when you did this, but I get 
you know, pretty fatigue. It's kind of like this, like weight just came off and I'm just like, well, I'm tired, you know? And I just, sometimes it'll close my head or close my eyes, drop my head a little bit and just kind of take a quick nap. Sometimes a nap will last a minute. Like it's weird how sometimes just that shutting down the brain for that little bit of time can refresh. And, and it does that for me. And sometimes it's, you know, longer, but usually it's no longer than 15 minutes. And then I take my last 10 minutes and I write down innovation, right? I, I write down, I'm a visionary. I, and I feel like when you get that clutter out and you replace it with, you know, you kind of, I feel like that the positivity is a cleansing almost. And then when you get all that out, it's just free flowing at that point. My mind starts to race with everything I could do. And what I, all that fear has been trapped in holding back, like, what can I do better? What can I do? And how can I get stronger? How can I get and do more to help others? You know, all those things start to flood my mind at that point. And I just start trying to capture them as fast as they flow out. Right. And so I do those three things. What was the third now, one, Gary? Tell, tell me the, the third, third one again. The third one I do is, is I, I sit there and think about innovation. Right? Innovation. Okay. Yeah. And so like improvement, right? How, like what, what, what would I do now that the, you know, what would I do now that the fear is gone? No. I think a lot of times we get trapped mentally because we have ideas and then, you know, there's a lot of books about this, as a matter of fact, that, and people talk about it, that as soon as your mind thinks about opportunity within five seconds, it starts telling you all the negative reasons why you shouldn't do it. Right. Right. And but, so you just, think, but you've just dumped all that out. So it's, you, you, it the innovation has more time to kind of sink in, I think. Yeah. And the gratitude too. Yeah. And the gratitude kind of cleanses it out for me, you know? So it's not just about removing it, but it's also about flushing it completely. And so, you know, that last step is cool for me because then I just start writing out all these innovation thoughts and they're there too, right? They've been trapped back in the back of the mind as well. So they're there and they're just waiting to be discovered. So those three steps are really important for me. Now, if there, I look back at my list, my, the one I, all the fear I moved, and I, I like to put it in two categories, right? I like to put it in category of everything that's in my control and everything that's not in my control. And, and, and a lot of people over the years have like drawn a circle and you put all the, 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 the ones that are in your control and you're in the middle and everything that's not your control on the outside. And everything I have inside of my control, because, you know, if it's in your control, you're not going to let it go. Ultimately, if, 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 if it's your fault or you cause it or, or you have ability to fix it, you're gonna st it's going to stay with you to some degree. So what I like to do is then I like to time block the amount of time I'm going to spend on it at that point. Like how, how much time am I going to spend on replacing this fear? And then I always tell people that we replace fear with knowledge. That's where fear comes from. Fear comes from, you said you're scared of flying. My biggest fear in the world has always been flying. Like I, people laugh at me when I say that because I've flown like 1,700 times. I fly three to five times a week. I'm scheduled for a flight today. Yeah. And, you know, and they're like, really? You're scared? I'm like, yeah, like every, every single flight. Now, how do I get on these flights? How do I, I mean, and I'm not talking about little fear. You know how people are scared of afraid, afraid of snakes and they're scared. Or, like my wife is deathly afraid of snakes. You brought a snake with her? within five feet of her, she's running. Like she'll scream and run. That's a very, I consider that a very similar fear to how I fear flying. Yeah. And the first hundred times I flew, man, I, I'd literally have a panic attack over and over again on the plane. And it, oh, nobody knew it. I wasn't running up and down the aisle screaming or anything. I contained it within myself, but it was still very real. And I lost of breath, and like I was gonna pass out, shaky, hands going numb, like all that, all these symptoms. And, and I, I found that the way I've been able to help myself and control that over these years, that was when I was a lot younger, is replacing fear with knowledge, right? When we fear something, the more knowledgeable we come in it, the better we feel about it, right? And the more we, we can push through the fear. You know, think, let's use, and I don't mean to use this COVID over and over again, but let's use that at right now. Like when it first came out, people were locked down, right? Like we, we shut, you know, we, not just the government, but like, People put it in their houses, they locked down, toilet paper was bought out. Like, why? Fear. Fear of the unknown, not knowing that people are dying. And, 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 and a real fear, to be honest with you. Like, this is not made up. This is, gonna, this is real. This is in close to home. And, and then as we have become more knowledgeable in it, one of the things cracks me up is getting on Facebook and everybody's like, told you so, 6%, blah, blah, you know, all these different things. And they're like, we messed up. We should have never. And they, what, what are they doing? They're letting that anxiety release finally. 
right? And everybody thinks they're being belligerent, but they're not. They're just, it's a form of release of anxiety. They finally have enough knowledge to validate, to free their mind from the fear. Even before when they're like this, you know, when we go to fear, that one of the first things we do is we, we, we create doubt. We go, we, we, we almost, we almost resist the change or the thought of like, you know, is this real, you know, and disbelief and things like that. And, and so that's one of the things that happens and people start to come out now and they're going, you know, we're getting knowledge. We're understanding how this thing works. We know what, th- how to treat it. We're starting to get these, 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 you know, what they call vaccines. And vaccines, things. yeah. Yeah. And what do we need? We need knowledge. Is everybody going to go get a vaccine or not? No. Are they going to go back to work eventually and start getting life back to normal? Yeah, we have to. And how is it, how is it going to happen? Replacing fear with knowledge. Right. I want to unpack a lot of what you said, Gary. That's that was a that was a ton of very very important stuff. Uh, the the, yeah. the everything you just said is like that's the that's the pattern for success in, in controlling your fears. But look, I want to start with the control. So I think what you just you were just talking about. Uh, you think about the things that you can control, <clears throat> and then you come up with a way to to act on that that you can control. So your fear of flying, for example the fear is there and it's going to be there no matter what, but then you have, you've come up with these techniques of things that you know, you can control the way you get on the plane, the, the way you sit, you know, these things that you can't control, you've taken those and you've empowered yourself to, you know, use those things that you know, you can control to give you some level of comfort, right. To give you some level of, Hey, I can, I can do this because I can take these three or four steps that I, I know I can control, I can't control the plane, the pilot, the, the, you know, anything else, but I can control these things that make me as comfortable as possible to get on this plane. Right. So yeah. I think that asking yourself, I, this is a question I ask myself all the time is, do I control this? And if the answer is no, I always ask myself, what do I control? And then I start, I take those steps to create a positive impact in my life for, for whatever situation I'm dealing with. Right. That's, that's the second phase of this. Uh, the first is if you if you ask yourself that question, do I control this? And the answer is yes, then you should take actions to solve that problem, right? Yeah. But if the, if the answer is no, then you should find those things that you do control that that will help you get beyond that that moment in time and beyond that fear, right? So I think that's that that's what you just said in in the in your in your fear of flying comments. But I wanted to kind of just frame it in a way that people can say, hey, do I control this? And if the answer is no, then you want to find those things that you do control. Yeah. Uh, and the example, it's a flight example again, too. The one that I hear all the time is uh, you're at the airport in Denver and you're, you're trying to get home and your flight is delayed by three hours or, or you know, you don't know how long it's going to be. The, you know, you can get mad and start yelling at the ticket agent. You can start, you know, you can do all these things that, that aren't going to ultimately impact what's going to happen. Or you can say, hey, I need to take this time uh, to read the book that I was going to read or I make the phone calls I was going to make because I was going to be on a plane. I could make my phone calls or I was going to, you know, I wasn't going to get a chance to eat. So I'm going to go eat. You know, you can take the opportunity to do something positive for yourself that is going to change the, the way your experience is with that particular incident. Right. And fear is a lot, a lot of that as well. Yeah. And, it, and it, I think that's what crosses it over into the mindset. So then now that's a mindset shift, right? Right. The exactly. one thing that holds us back, but then, it does create a ripple down effect in the mindset. And the mindset is either how are we going to approach this? Are we going to be positive in the more approach? Zig Ziglar actually says, and as you can tell, I'm a big Zig Ziglar fan, but yeah. he, in one of uh, his statements, he said that when he was at the airport waiting and flight, found out his flight's delayed, he, he, and he looked up at the stewardess who had just been hollered out by five other people in front of him. And she, he, says, he walks up and he says, so uh, I'm on that flight. My flight's delayed too. And she Yes, sir, your flight's delayed too. And he goes, well, thank you so much for making sure our flight is, is delayed. And she looked at him really puzzled. I'm like, what? She, he says, I can't be more grateful for you making sure our flight's delayed today. She says, don't be a smart aleck. And he's like, no, I'm serious. She, he says, and his statement was, there's either a problem up there or a problem down here. And I'd much rather be down here if there's a problem, right? So <laughs> it was the same mindset thing of right. like, I'm going to approach this the right way. And ever since that, ever since I heard that, I try to, whenever I find myself getting upset, asking that question, like, am I using fear or having the wrong mindset that's driving me to be frustrated, right? Or am I not replacing the fear with knowledge? What's creating this anxiety? What's creating this fear? 
first know yourself, right? Know who you are, know what those fears are. That exercise helps me in a really big way to identify what those things are. But then like now deciding which bucket do they belong in. Do they belong in the bucket of do something about it because I control it? Or does it belong in the bucket that I'm borrowing from tomorrow's problems? And this, you know, and one of the ways that I test this against myself is whenever I have a fear, whenever I have a thought, whenever I get anxious, I always ask this question. I go, is what I'm thinking right now true? Say that one more time. I always ask this, is what I'm thinking right now true? True, yeah. Yeah, true. Because I need to first identify whether or not it's a valid concern and something that needs to be dealt with, or am right. I borrowing from a potential problem? See, the thing is, 90% of what we fear is the unknown, right? So it, right. it is borrowing from tomorrow's problems. How many times, Sean, in our lives have we been up all night or worried sick or wondering if this and what if that, only to find out it never happens? Right, yeah. Right? It never comes true. We were flying home the other day from Boston, Massachusetts, and I'm looking at the weather. And I, again, I don't like flying. So I'm looking at the weather and I'm like, you know, we're going to fly through bad storms. That hurricane just came across the Midwest, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, we're going to fly through some really crappy storms. And we're supposed to be coming over Chicago. And it's like they had a severe thunderstorm watch and warnings starting to pop up. And I'm looking at it. And about the time we're supposed to be landing was the hot of the, the heat of the storm, right? And so I'm thinking, man, this is, this is terrible. And I started, going, what if we get delayed? And what if we have bad turbulence? What if we have to fly around? And all these what if thinking. And then I just, I stopped myself and get Gary, is what you're thinking right now true? And the answer was, is it possibly could be, but also could change. How often are they wrong with the weather? And would you believe, Sean, as we flew in, the, the storms never developed. Right. <laughs> right? Like it, it was actually, we flew, they flew around a couple of the storms that were from the hurricane. It was one of the most peaceful flights I'd ever been on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, like, you come on. Know. What is, you know, what's wrong? Why do we borrow from tomorrow's problems? Right? And, right? and I think that's really important to know. First of all, what do you have control over? What do you not have control over? The things I have control over, I want to put, replace it with knowledge. Things I don't have control over, this is my funnest thing to do. That weekly thing that I write all that stuff down. And then I've looked at it and go, what are the things I have control over? What should I be working on? What should, what are in my bucket? I tend to take time to make sure those get taken care of. But the things I don't, and, and again, I'm working not just to have fear of them. I'm working to convert them to respect, right? I'm working to give them knowledge so that they're, I respect them, not fear them. Right. Again, studying. And then what I do on the stuff that I don't have control over, my favorite thing to do, I don't know if you remember this, but I typically rip that top of that piece of paper off. And I burn it. I love burning that top of sheet. You just release them. Yeah. It's the coolest feeling in the world. I mean, I'm not a narcissist. So don't, you know, I'm not, I, I, what are they? Narcissist. Narcissist. Yes. Yeah. I'm not a narcissist either, but you understand. I, but I do love this. Watch that sheet of paper burn. Right. It's something just very, very elite, a, a huge release for me to watch it just kind of go up in flames and dissipate. And, well, and that's, uh, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to circle back to, we talked about the, the control issue, but I wanted to circle back to, because this, this exercise that you're doing is, this is the, this is a life changer for, for many people, I guarantee it. And so writing those, let's circle back to writing those things down. You know, the power that that has, you know, our minds carry these things around, whether we ask it to, or want it to, or, or we, whether we're thinking about it or not. And in my case, I had all these fears, but I had, I had just sort of hidden them in my brain and was not dealing with them at all, but they, but they never left, right? They never left. And there, there has to be a way for you to sort of uh, get these things out uh, to discover them so that you can deal with them or discover them so that you can, like you said, turn them to respect and, and, and educate yourself about them or just release them. Right. Yep. And writing them down is such a powerful thing. You need to, you need to say, it, say them out loud or write them down or something. Yeah. See, but, I won't say them out loud and I have a really particular reason why you want to hear why? Yes, so, I do. I won't say them out loud because I say, I feel like giving things, putting things in word form, uh, speaking them, give it power. Yeah, that's true. That's a and good, so, that's a good point. You know, sales, I've been in sales a lot of my life and I'm, I'm always telling people that I want people to say it. I want them to say it's a good deal. I want them to, why? Because when we hear it, we believe it. When we hear ourselves say it, we yeah. really believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Self-talk so, is like 40 times more powerful than, than someone else telling you something. 
that it scares me to death to actually say one of my fears out loud, right? I'll say the fear out loud like flying now because I've, it's a respect thing. It's not a fear anymore. I've overcome it, right? Like I say, I say it as, you know, to give you an instance or an example of what I've feared in the past, but I, I get on three to five planes a week, right? Like it's not, I don't let it control me, right? Right. So I still respect it, right? I still respect the thought, but I don't let it, it's not a controlling, it's not a fear anymore, right? So that's why I won't say it out loud. Like we, we've talked about this before. You actually asked me one time, you asked me and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Remember that? You're like, yeah. you're like, well, will you write them down? Right. Remember? And yeah. you give them to me. And I'm like, yeah, I'll write them down, brother. But I ain't saying them. Like, I just can't. Like I'm and I won't. too much power. Yeah. There's way too much power. You know? Yeah, and that's my, true. My mom used to say all the time, she'd say, uh, she'd say, um, Gary, uh, be careful what you say. It might just, it might just happen. You know, be yeah. careful what you say. It might be, it might come true. You know, and I, I don't want, I don't want those things to come true. So I'm, I don't want to give them the power that they don't deserve. Well, I think writing them down is, I think, the best way to, to to sort of get those out of your brain, right? So you have to get, you have to find a way. Journaling is a great way for people to do this. You know, you can t- yeah. keep a journal like you do this every Friday. Yeah. Uh, there's some people that keep a daily way. journal. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's all kinds of ways to do it. I do it. I just do it periodically when I'm sort of feeling a little uh, overloaded. I'll sit, I'll sit and just sort of go through this process as well. And I don't, I don't, I don't have a consistent like every Friday kind of thing, but I do it, you know, every month or so. And, and just kind of when I'm feeling like, Hey, I don't, I don't think I'm running on all you know cylinders here. Let's get some of this kind of out of my brain. And I'll do, I have a journaling book that I keep and I do it in my journaling book, but so I think just for someone that, that is, that wants to identify uh, fears in their life, I think step one is to just sit down and just get those out like you do, you know, every Friday, but you just sit down and get those out on a piece of paper and just let everything come out. And you'll, I think a lot of people will find that it's, it's, it's ex- the first time you do it, especially for me, it was extremely, it's overwhelming. I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. I had to stop. It took me, <laughs> it took me two or three months to get all my fears kind of out, you know, for the yeah. first time. It was like that, that, that unloading of the mind was, uh, was heavy. So, but I think I, that's, that's a very I, powerful first step. Fr- I'm sorry. That's why I do it every Friday. Cause I don't want to, I don't want the build up. Yeah. I just don't like, I, I want to keep it as clean and as, you know, as l- minimal as possible right like i don't i don't want the build up because the build up for me it's like feels like quicksand you know like and i think it's harder to come out of that once it's built up than it is to keep just maintain that i think that's kind of like anything in life but but yeah. if you're journaling you're probably doing that subconsciously anyway and then you talked about your step two was what was your step two is just uh, it's writing down all the things that were rejoiceful like gratitude and right so gratitude, gratitude right uh, let's, I'm going to still deal with the fears for now. So we'll get back to the gratitude and, and the actions, but the, the fears, once you have those written down, uh, the step that I take next is to identify the, like you said, the ones that I, that I can control and then the ones I can't control. Yeah. And I, I, I look at my fears, uh, in a couple of ways, the ones that I do control, I look to see if it's something that I need to fix technically, or is it something I need to fix emotionally? You know, like the loss of your child, you can't really fix that technically. Well, I guess there is a technical component to it. But there's, you want to deal with that emotionally. If this, if this happens in my life, how am I going to react? How am I going to feel? How am I going to sort of deal with it to get, to get beyond it or get past it or get through it? And you can kind of deal with that on an emotional level. And then one of mine, that's a technical thing. Like I was always afraid that, that I would die and my, my family would be left with, you know, all this real estate uh, business that they didn't fully understand. So, so one of the things that I was afraid of was not having an estate plan in place. And that's more of a technical issue. It, there is an emotional component to me dying, but it's, it, I was, I was worried about the technical part of it. So then you, you know, you just go to get your estate plan worked out and all those things. But the most important thing is that you've identified the fear. You've identified how to address it, whether on a technical level or emotional level, and then take those actions that you need to take so that you're, so you're kind of dealing with those. Is, and that's kind of what you were just saying. You, you look at every Friday, you write them down, and then you look at what do I control, what do I not control? And then the third one is the ones that don't fit into that technical or emotional bucket. Those are just kind of fears that you shouldn't really be carrying around, and you want to kind of release those. And you're, the way you do it is amazing. You know, burning that piece of paper, it kind of, it kind of lets those all go. Right. Yeah. I love that part of it. It's, yeah. So I think that's those, those two things that you just talked about that you do every Friday is, which is amazing. I, I'm going to have to 
really step my game up here and do do this more often. But I think if people can get those fears out, write them down, and then find the bucket that they fit into, and then work on the technical plan to 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 fix it and take control of it, or work out the emotional plan to take control of it, or just release it. I think those three things will change their, their, the way they look at their fears and then, and, and it'll change, it'll definitely change the control that those fears have over their day yeah. and their life. Right. For sure. Yeah. I mean, if you're stuck today, if you're struggling, you're like, I've tried to implement systems. I've tried to do this in my business. I've tried to do that. It's, you know, I think Sean's a good testimonial to the fact that it's not that you don't need them. It's just, they're not the first thing you need to work on. You know, the right. first thing you might need to work on is you. And I, you, you, you'll hear in my teaching a lot. I always say you first. Right. Like I'm always saying, you know, know thyself, you know, know yourself. Right. You have no right to lead other people until you've led yourself first. Right. And uh, it's so important that we do that. A couple of things I, if you don't mind, I'd like to, I'd like to give out to the, to this podcast. First of all, one is there's a really good book that me and my wife love and we've read many times and it's called do it scared. Yeah. You've talked about it before. Yeah. And it's, it'll, it'll create the life you love by overcoming the fear and adversity. Right. That you by giving you courage, self face it. And it talks about seven different types of fear archetypes procrastinator, the rule follower, people pleaser, the outcast, and self doubter, the excuse maker, and the pessimist. And so there's an assessment called doitscared.com. I don't know the accuracy of it, but anything that helps us understand us better is probably a good thing, right? So whether you 100% agree with it or not, it's not kind of irrelevant to me. It gets you thinking in the right manner, right? Like what. Why did this even read that this is a majority, you know, one of my major fears, right? Or one of my top fears. Doascared.com gives you that assessment to see, like mine's people pleaser. You know, it's, for, it's like 59% people pleaser. And I know that's a fear of mine. Like that's one of the, the biggest thing my fears are based in is, am I, do I make people happy or do I help others and things like that? The other thing, the last thing I'll say here is even though I only do the mental cleanse once a week, I do something every day and there's some statements that I like to say to myself. You know, we talk about uh, not saying our fears because when we say our fears, right, Sean, we, we lose, we give it power. Well, these statements kind of give me the power, give me power in a different way. Right. So I always say these things right here. I say, there are no mistakes, only lessons. Right. So it's a statement I like to repeat. I, I say these affirmations, I try to say them daily. Olin Miller says you probably wouldn't worry about the peop what people think. This is one of my favorite ones because I'm a people pleaser. But he says you probably won't worry about what people think of you if you couldn't if you knew how seldom they actually do. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And that helps me because I'm a people pleaser. Next one is what do you think you can or you think you can't? You're right. Yeah. That one gets thrown around a lot, but it's something that I re remind myself. John Maxwell, as you know, I'm John Maxwell certified, and I love this statement. It is easier to move from failure to success than from excuse to success. So that's another one I use that kind of helped drive me. Two more here. Shannon Alder says, you're only a victim in the degree of what your perception allows. That's a pretty powerful one for me, right? That's yeah. that what if thinking, borrowing from tomorrow's problems. And then the last one is, yeah, that, no, that was it. That was the last one I had, but the, there's, these are the ones in which I, I, I try to give myself affirmations regularly, daily, if I can, if I have time for it, I'll, I'll just quote these. I have them on a three by five card that I'm reading off here. And I, I keep those in my wallet just to kind of, just to pull them out every now and then is kind of give me some, give me some positive affirmations. And I love stating them because again, when I say it, it's true, right? When my mind says it, my heart hears it. It's, it becomes very true to me. So I don't know. I hope that helps your, your listeners today. I know it's an area in my life that I've struggled big time with and, uh, and I've not allowed it to cripple me or stop me. But I think if we all were to stand up and be counted someday and say, Hey, is fear, a fa is fear a problem or a factor of your life? I think we'd all agree that in some way, shape or form it shows up. Yeah. And it's uh, sometimes you don't even realize it. I, I was just completely blinded to it. I mean, I didn't even realize that I had, that, that it was causing a problem for me. So just by, just by trying these exercises and doing these things, it opened up a whole world for me that I didn't know I even needed to open up. You know, I, I knew, I knew I was having trouble getting to the next level in my business and getting to the next level in my life and kind of having some of that clarity, but I didn't know what the cause was. You know, I assumed it was because I wasn't fast enough or smart enough or, you know, all those things you think, 
you know, I wasn't motivated enough, you know, and, but, but man, I had, I educated myself all the time about my business. I had motivation just coming out of my ears. I, I couldn't get any more motivated. You know, I, I want my dreams bad. You know, I, I, I just couldn't figure out how to be more motivated. And, and so I was, I was doing all the things that you hear about positive thinking, all these other things. And I wasn't addressing the negatives in my life, you know, and the negatives were actually like anchors in, in holding me back from making the decisions that I needed to make or wanted to make to get to the next level. Right. Mm -hmm. So these fears were there without even me even knowing it, you know, and it took, it took me, it took that, the, the catalyst of that event to realize, Hey, maybe this is something in my life that I need to deal with. And then doing that exercise, when I did that exercise, I knew, I knew instantly this is a, this is a problem, you know, because I, I'm not, a, I'm not a super emotional guy. I mean, I do get emotional, but this was hard to, to do, you know, I mean, it was, it was, I haven't felt that sad, you know, in a long time, just, and I was, all I was doing is writing stuff on a piece of paper. You know, it seemed like such an easy thing. I wasn't even taking it, you know, fully understanding the seriousness of it at all, you know, when I first started it. So uh, I think if people can do, get those exercises down, uh, and just maybe try that. I think it'd be a big deal. You know, and you mentioned a book too. I, one of the books that I read uh, during that time period was Fearvana. Mm -hmm. I think you've read that one too, probably, but uh, it also, it, it talks more about how to utilize your fears to sort of propel you forward. And that, that's kind of what I think I've done. I, you know, I've taken my fears and reframed them in a way that they don't scare me anymore. They're not burdens to me. They're, they're kind of catalysts for success. You know, I, I you know, we don't, we don't want to look at our lives as, as short, you know, and sometimes dealing with those fears, like, like I said, a minute ago, I was afraid that I, maybe I would die and my family would be burdened with these things. But then you start to think to yourself, you know, life is short. Let's, let's get, let's get going. Let's get to the, to, to happiness and success and fulfillment. Let's get to these things and not worry so much about uh, your failures every day. And, you know, and, and address those, deal with them and move, move to success is what you want to do. So a lot of ways, Fearvana sort of talks about use, utilizing fear to, to be more successful. And, and that's how I, that's how I like to think of it too, is, is a, Hey, let's, let's use these things as catalysts, not, not, not burdens. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one last step that I always tell people, you know, we've talked about fear. We've talked about knowledge and how to replace fear. And the last one for me is I always tell people, if you, when you identify the fear, you replace it with knowledge and sustain it with faith. Right. And you have to have faith in knowing that what the knowledge that you obtain is the right knowledge and that you're doing the right thing. And, you know, you have to have faith in that, right? You have to believe it. And, and you can't go back to the what if thinking from there. So you, you start with identifying the knowledge, deciding if it's something you do something about, replace it with, or I'm sorry, fear, and then decide if it's something you do something about, replace it with the knowledge and sustain it with faith. And that's been at least the recipe for me. And I, I, I think it works and, and uh, at least it works for me for sure. Yeah. And that's, that's what I was going to talk about next is uh, now that, now that we've identified our fears, we've identified ways to take care of them or, or to deal with them. Uh, the most important next step is to start to say, okay, the gratitude is extremely important. What, what am I, what am I grateful for in my life? What am I happy with in my life? What, what are the things that are going right in my life? And you want to start to reprogram or reframe your thinking and, 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 and put those things in your mind. You want to get the fears out, deal with those on a technical or emotional level. And then you want to start to put the things in that are good in your life and the things that you want more of, right? You want, you want more of gratitude. You want more success. You want those things. So I think that that third step is, is as critical. And like you said, also, you want to start looking at you, you, in your, in your writings, you say the gratitude and then you take the uh, innovations or the actions, you know, so these are some of the things I would really like to accomplish. Right. I think those kind of go together mm -hmm. as the next phase in this process where you've identified your fears, you've started dealing with them. And now where do you want to go and uh, replacing your, your mindset with positive gratitudes and, and actions to, to get you to those places. Right. I think that's what you were just alluding to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a, that's an, a critical step as well. And you want to, you want to do the same process. It's, it can be the same thing, writing those down. And with those, you want to actually start to, in, you know, read through those, make those kind of uh, programming into your brain. And those will help you sort of, you know, be, uh, like you said, be a catalyst for success as opposed to some burden that's keeping you back. The, the things you're grateful for and the actions that you want to take are, are going to be critical to get you 
you know, to get you going and at a higher next level performance, you know, for your business, for your life, for your relationships, everything. Well, I think that's, that pretty much sums everything up that those are, those are kind of the, 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 the ways that I've dealt with it and the ways you've, you've dealt with it too. And I think they're very similar. I, I, I've seen this in a number of books um, that I've read kind of on, on tr trying to deal with these things for myself. You know, it's, it's in religious teachings. It's, it's in, you know, I, I have a, a lot of stoic uh, philosophy thinking the way I do things. It's a, a stoic uh, philosophy is to deal with your fears. You know, that's like the first thing you have to do to get yourself right so that you can, so that you can go be successful. Right. So, uh, it's step one. I think this is step one in sort of, in sort of cleansing yourself and, and moving forward is dealing with this fear scenario. So, um, I wanted to, yeah, I was, I was extremely happy you agreed to talk to me about this. You know, I know you and I, uh, share some of this stuff. And I, I, I also know that there's a lot of people out there that were like me, they just haven't even identified this as an issue in their life. And it's, for me, it's, it's, it's taken such a weight off my uh, shoulders so that I can move freer in, in my life, you know, and, and I wanted to share that with somebody, yeah. hopefully, you know, if there's somebody well, out there listening. If we help just one out of a hundred, you know, it's worth doing. So, yeah. you know, so it's, that's how I always look at things. You know, we're, I'm not in this to help the masses. I'm in this, to help, you know, one that can help the masses. Right. And if we can make one impactful change, it can create a ripple effect or a compound effect throughout. So that's that's why I'm excited about being able to do this with you. And uh, people are going to listen to this and go, I don't fear anything. You know, I don't have that fear. I don't know what they're talking about. And I challenge you to look within yourself. I challenge you to just give the exercise 30 minutes of your time, sometimes a week, and see if see what it produces, right? Like I, I, I would tell you that most people that did the exercise that day with you, Sean, all started the same way with like – you know, maybe should I take the phone call instead of doing the exercise, right? Like, it's, do I really need to take time to do this? And I think a lot of them that did found found it to be helpful. So hopefully it's yeah. helped the people on your podcast the same way. Sean, I so much appreciate you allowing me to be on here and talk about this today. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Gary. I, I appreciate you coming on. We're going to have you back on again. I, I hope whenever you have free time, I want to have you on the show for sure. Awesome. You're one of my favorite people to talk to. <laughs> you know, we, we don't get a chance to talk all the time, but it's a, it's amazing when we do. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And I guess we'll, we'll put, uh, we'll put your, we, we talked to you before. We'll put all your sharper process uh, website for people to contact you and things. You're an amazing teacher uh, and amazing business consultant. So I want to make sure people can find you if, if they want to, but we'll put all that down yeah. in the show notes. Yeah. Um, so exactly. people can reach out to you. Well, maybe tell us a little bit about what you have going on right now. What's, what are, what are some of your upcoming things you have happening? Well, I mean, we're, we're working with clients one-on-one -on -one every week. We're heading to LA today and then San Diego later this week and then back home. And then the next week is our couples retreat. We have an entrepreneurial couples retreat once a year and that one's sold out. Fortunately and unfortunately, I'd love to have more people with COVID. We were had, we had to curate a limited amount of seats. Gary Chapman, who wrote the five love language book is our guest speaker for the two days. And so we're excited about him being there and working with him for two days to, to hit the reset button in our relationships, you know? So we all take time to work on our business, but we all don't take time to work on our relationships that help our business. And, uh, and I'm a firm believer in if it's not right at home, it's not going to be right at work. So right. uh, it's something we've added and I'm not, I'm not a subject matter expert in it, but I do bring in a lot of subject matter experts to help us with it. Keith Callen, we have, one of those people you mentioned him earlier and uh, he's a leader and a coach around leadership and relationship building. And so we bring him in along with others to help with that. But uh, yeah, that's what we have going on right now. And we have our next boot camp. We actually have a really cool workshop coming up in, in a couple months where it's going to be very interactive. We actually build a business in the room with the team that's there from scratch and show you how to actually like literally build a business and, and from identifying your avatar, your marketing strategy, your vision plan, all that. Like we do all that together in one room and that's exciting. So that, that's an upcoming event you have. Yeah. We have that coming up in Chicago. That's the one in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. yeah. And people can find that at the sharper .com. Yeah. Just go to sharper .com, Go to the bottom, go to events. And it's, there's only two events on there right now. You know, we have not planned any, any future events right. outside of that right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, awesome. Well, thanks Gary. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's talk soon. Hopefully. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate your time. All right. We'll see you later. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Next Level American Dream. If you would like to learn more about what we talked about today, want to contact the team directly, or are interested in passively investing and being a part of our deal room, 
head over to our website at www.thompsonmultifamilygroup.com. Before you go, please leave a review. Your comments help us create more episodes for you to enjoy.